Hello everyone, Mauro here. In this video, we're going to look at the new features and changes that Microsoft is rolling out on Windows 11 build 26120.2510 in the dev channel. These improvements are part of the Windows 11 version 24H2 development, but it is unclear when they're going to be available to users. However, this release aims to bring many of the AI features already available on ARM to AMD and Intel processors. Okay, let's dive into the changes in this latest preview of Windows 11. But before, please subscribe to the channel and click the like button to help YouTube show this video to more people. It doesn't cost anything and you will be helping the channel and supporting my work. Okay, in this release, Microsoft is finally delivering the Windows Recall feature for Copilot Plus PCs using AMD and Intel processors. So Windows Recall was previously only available for devices using Qualcomm Snapdragon processors, mm -hmm. but now it's expanding to the x86 architecture. I'm not going to go into much details because I plan to create an, a dedicated walkthrough video for this feature. However, after installing build 26120-2510, the AI components will install automatically through the Windows update to make available this feature. So for example, if we go to settings and then we go to system and then we scroll down, we're going to find that we have a new AI components page. And in here that we can see the different AI components already install on the computer so if we want to see the settings for recall here that's where you're going to be able to configure the experience okay so this is my first time actually enabling windows recall on a computer that actually supports the feature so let's do this together so if you have a computer that supports the feature you're going to see the icon on the taskbar but you can also find it if we go to the start menu and look for recall when you open the feature you're going to have this greeting and then you just need to go through the steps to enable the feature. And to get started, we need to enable recall to take screenshots and save those into your computer. Of course, you're going to have to authenticate every time that you open Windows Recall because all the data is now encrypted, even though you are logged in in your computer. So no one. So if the computer sign in, no one can access your data unless it is you. I'm just going to use a pen. And now Windows Recall is turned on on the computer. Of course, because we just enabled the feature, nothing is going to be recorded. Now, the actual Windows Recall app is virtually identical to the original release, but this update addresses many of the security and privacy concerns from the original release. In other words, the operating system now keeps all the recall data always encrypted, and you will have to authenticate every time that you want to access the data. So it can get a little bit annoying, but, but that is the best way for Microsoft to keep your data more secure. Now, another way that you can go by setting up the feature is by going to the settings app. And then if we go to the privacy and security settings, and then we go to the recall snapshots page in here, you can enable and disable the feature. And from here, you can control the storage. You can use the default 25 gigabytes, 50 or 75, and the amount of storage that you're going to be using will dictate how much activities Recall is going to be able to record. You can also delete snapshots from here and we can control sensitive information. This is also a new feature for this particular experience. And as you can see now, if the feature detects any passwords, credit cards, or other type of sensitive information, it's now going to save that snapshot. And we can also filter apps from being recorded when using the feature and websites. And here is also an option where you can send the information of different applications and websites that you want to filter. So then Microsoft can use this information to improve the feature. Now, like I said, I'm not going to go too much into details on this feature because I plan to make a dedicated video. But let's say if we want to reopen Recall, then we're going to be greeted again with the Windows Hello Authentication, which you have to use to access your data. And as you can see, this is recall in action. And since we've been doing some activities on the computer, we have some snapshots already available. Microsoft also points out that the preview for Windows Recall is available in select languages, including Chinese Simplify, English, French, German, Japanese, and Spanish. In addition, the company was able to make the AI feature compliant with, with the European economic area. So in addition, Microsoft is expanding the click-to-do feature instead of the Windows Recall 
for AMD and Intel devices. Furthermore, the feature is also available outside of the recall experience. So what is actually click to do? Well, it's actually a context menu that offers different actions that you can do in text and elements instead of a snapshots or across the screen on your desktop. So right now, if I hover over this button, you can see that we have the ability to hide click to do. And now the screenshot, we can't take any actions from it. But if we enable click to do, that's when the AI analyzes the snapshots so we can do different actions. So for example, right here, if I select this, we can copy the text and do other actions. So we can send this selection of text to different applications or search the web. The actions will be different depending on the elements that you're selecting. The feature actually leverages the Phycelia on-device small language model, which is part of the Windows Copilot runtime available on version 24H2. And according to the company, the text actions actually use the cloud to analyze and, and generate the different responses. But the analysis on the screen is always performed locally on the device. Now, if you want to use click to do outside of Windows recall, so let's say that we minimize this and then we open the Microsoft Store, just as an example, we can press the Windows key and then we just do a right click on the mouse. And as you can see now, we're in click to do. We have the interface right here and we can select from the different elements on the screen. And this is click to do in action. So this is a context menu and we can do different things. So in this case, we can copy the element that I selected. We can save it, share it, open it with other apps. We can also do a visual search and we can use the blur background, but using the photos app, the same way that we can erase the object, but we have to open the photos app. Or in this case, we can also remove the background, but then the snapshot is going to open with the paint app. If you want to search for anything, the snapshot we can use the interface right here so i never used this before so let's just look for games and as you can see it highlights everything that says games so if we click the recall button that opens the windows recall app and i guess now i'm outside of the um, click to the experience so if you switch apps that goes away so let me just press the windows button i'm gonna do a click and then we get that fancy animation. Then we can actually pin the interface to, to the toolbar and then pin it to. If we copy text, we can see that we have the same context menu that was available on the recall app. Now, in addition to the uh, Windows click keyboard shortcut, we can also use the Windows Q shortcut and that will open also the click to do interface. Now, this feature requires you to enable Windows recall, but you don't have to enable the feature to save snapshots. Now let's look at the co-creator feature that is also available for AMD and Intel Copala Plus PCs. This feature has already been available for the Snapdragon processors. So to use that feature, open start and look for paint. And then we just need to click on co-creator. And basically you need to describe what you want to create. And in this case, I'm just going to choose create a garden of flowers. Then you can grab any of the tools and you can start drawing and the AI is going to create a better image of what you're creating. So I'm going to select watercolor and let's just put creativity to 50%. And then we're just going to start creating. And as you start doing your drawing, you can see on the right that the AI is already working. You can see how that looks and let's just just create another one. And you get the idea. Once you're done with your drawing, you can actually select and drag it to the paint canvas. And now we have a drawing created with AI based on your drawing. On Windows 11 build 26120-2510 in the dev channel, the company is also updating the Photos app for Intel and AMD Copala Plus PCs. And now the app includes the restyle image feature as well as the image creator feature. Now, first let's look at the restyle image. So when you send the photos app and you open an image and then you go to the edit section, now you're going to find a 
option called restyle image when you click that. So this is my first time actually using this feature. So I guess we have to sign in with a Microsoft account. And on this block, we can actually describe what type of style we want to apply to the picture. And from here, I'm just going to select the fantasy and that's going to analyze the picture and it's going to make those changes. We can change the creativity percentage. I guess it went too far because now you can even tell that the picture had a car. We also have this menu right here where you can choose what you want to restyle. In this case, you can do everything or you can do the background or the foreground. Also in the Photos app, we get the image creator feature, which is basically a feature that allows you to create images based on a text prompt. And of course you have to be signed in with your Microsoft account in order to use it. Now, if you want to create an image, you just need to use any of the samples right here, or you can type, uh, let's say for example, let's just do bear drinking coffee, and then just click the generate button. And you can also use the creativity slider to select how creative you want the AI to be when created the images. You can choose from the different options that appear on this feature and then just click the refresh button to recreate the images. Then you can simply just, you can select a variation of the image that you just created or you can save it to your computer. And that's just a quick look of the image creator feature. In this update, Microsoft is also making visual changes to the battery icon on the system tray. As you can see right here, when it's charging, now you're going to see that the battery icon is now green. And you can see that on the quick settings flyout menu. And if we go to the settings app, to the power settings, we're also going to see the new icon. However, this feature is actually hidden, so you have to enable it manually, but it will soon be available through the insider program. So now if we enable energy saver and I disconnected the cable from the computer. So you can see now that we have a battery icon and it's now showing with the orange color. And you will see that on every place where the battery is actually displayed. So on the system trade and also in the flyout menu for quick settings. Now, if we go to the settings app, more specifically to the camera settings, then we just choose the camera and then we're going to see that we have a new advanced camera options feature. And then if we click the edit button, we are going to see that we have two options. So one of the options is to allow multiple apps to access the stream from one camera at the same time. This is actually a good feature for streamers. And also we can use a turn on basic camera settings. And that basically is going to allow you to troubleshoot problems with the camera. And finally, on Windows 11, build 26120-2510, Microsoft is expanding the visual changes for Windows Hello. We have seen these changes on different channels, but now they're available through the dev channel. So basically, when you lock the screen and you try to sign in, you're going to see that we have a new animation that lets you know the type of authentication that you're using. Now, Microsoft is also updating the Windows Hello experience for dialogues when you have to authenticate using pass keys. So let's say, for example, I go to Chrome and then I, I'm going to go to my Google account. And if I try to sign in, you can see this is the updated UI or Windows Hello. If you want to change the sign in option, you can click right here. And we also get a new animation for Windows Hello face. And that's it. Those are the most significant changes on Windows 11 through the dev channel. If you have an Intel or AMD Copala Plus PC, Microsoft recommends checking for system and app updates after upgrading to Windows 11 build 26120.2510. Also, it is recommended that you manually download the drivers for AMD graphics and MPU for Intel Core Ultra 200V series processors to access the new features. Check the video description where I have a link to the written walkthrough for this preview. And also that article includes the links so you can download the drivers if needed. Let me know in the comments what you think about these new features on Windows 11. Like the video, share it, and I just hope this video was informative for you. And I would like to thank you for viewing.